Hello, I'm Dr. Mark Mitchell. I'm a professor of zoological medicine at Louisiana State University School of Veterinary Medicine. Today, I'm going to talk about taking care of leopard geckos. These little lizards make great pets, but before you bring your leopard gecko home, it's important to do all of your research and come home with all of the habitat and needs of that lizard so that you can make a smooth transition when you bring your pet home. First, I'd like to talk about setting up the habitat, and that always starts with the enclosure. Leopard geckos should be housed in at least a 10 to 20 gallon tank. 10 gallon tanks are 20 inches in length, whereas a 20 gallon tank is 24 inches. The larger the, the tank, the more exercise room for the gecko and the more geckos that you can keep in them. It is really important as well to make sure that you keep a screen lid on top of your geckos. While the vertical height of this 20 gallon tank will prevent the gecko from escaping, but this also acts as a good barrier because sometimes our dogs and cats that live in the same household, they want to meet the leopard gecko. So this will serve as an appropriate barrier to protect our leopard geckos from our other pets in our house. Next, I want to talk about substrate. There are a wide variety of substrates that are available on the market for leopard geckos. For those younger geckos, we can use things like a cage carpet or a liner or a paper towel, and we recommend the Fluker's Reptiliner. What's nice about these substrates is that they allow us to actually monitor the feces or droppings of our lizards, and we can look to see if they look formed or if there's a diarrhea. If there's a diarrhea or a problem, contact your veterinarian because they can actually check to make sure that there aren't parasites. For adults, we recommend a natural bedding type sand. You want to avoid things that are calcium carbonate based because they can actually lead to impaction. So we'll recommend a, a substrate such as this. You can just cover the bottom of the enclosure with it and that'll actually provide a nice surface for these animals and it mimics a more natural setting. It is important, however, when you feed these animals, if you notice that they do seem to take in a lot of sand, you may want to feed them separately to ensure that they're not getting too much sand with the crickets or mealworms that they're eating. As I mentioned, just spread the substrate on the bottom. It doesn't have to have great depth because these animals aren't very big in burrowing and we're gonna provide them shelters as a way to help them hide. Next, we wanna add accessories to the habitat that actually make the leopard gecko feel at home. In this case, we can add things like driftwood. We can also add hiding spaces, such as the Fluker Farms half log. In these particular cases, I tend to like to put these on the cooler side of the enclosure so that the animals don't have to seek shelter where it's really, really quite warm. In addition, this is a good time to go ahead and put in our water bowl. And the uh, Fluker Farms corner water bowl works really well for this. Because these animals are not an amphibian or fish, they actually can have their tap water without it being dechlorinated. In addition, we should always have a humidity chamber inside of our leopard gecko box. Even though these animals actually come from the desert, they do do a lot of burrowing in shallow sand and those moist environments actually allow them to maintain humidity and help with their shedding. In most cases, what we like to do is to use some kind of a cave type setting and some moss. By moistening the moss, we can create that humidity chamber. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and use the Fluker's green moss. And we can go ahead and spray it. And getting it nice and moist will help trap that humidity underneath our cave. And that will, again, ensure that these animals have the humidity that we want. Next, we want to talk about temperature and lighting for our leopard geckos. Leopard geckos are ectotherms, like all of the reptile. Some people like to call them cold-blooded for that reason. They don't regulate their body temperature like we do from an internal clock. Instead, they do it from their environmental temperature. So it's really important that we provide them that appropriate temperature. In addition, our leopard geckos are actually crepuscular, meaning that they spend their most active times kind of at dawn or at dusk. 
So you may see them becoming very active at certain parts of the day. When we're thinking about temperature for these animals, the temperature on the high end should be about 85 to 90 degrees. So what we like to call the basking area. On the cool side, it can be an ambient temperature, room temperature 73 to 75 degrees. To ensure that we can provide them that temperature, there are a couple different ways we can do that. My preference is actually to use radiant light, just like the sun with its infrared heat. In that particular case, we can use something like a Fluker's clamp lamp and an incandescent light bulb, such as this neodymium day bulb. This will provide a white type of a light, make it really obvious and visible for our animals. For those who want to see their animals more active in the nighttime, the black bulbs or the red bulbs can also be used. It's really important that you actually monitor the temperature of the enclosure as well so that you're sure that that grading is there because that leopard gecko will transition from the warm to the cool side as they need it. This adhesive flat thermometer can be kept on the warm side of the enclosure so that we can always make sure that we see what that temperature range is. Or we can actually use the digital Fluker's thermometer hygrometer. In addition to getting the temperature, this will also tell us what the moisture level is inside the enclosure. In addition to the infrared heat that I just talked about and that type of a lighting system, it's important to provide your leopard geckos with UVB light as well. Historically, people didn't think UVB lights were important for leopard geckos because they're crepuscular and nocturnal. They wouldn't be exposed to the sun. But research that I've done at Louisiana State University has shown over and over again that when you expose your leopard geckos to UVB light, their vitamin Ds synthesize at a much higher level, similar to our very own. We know that metabolic bone disease can be a big problem in these animals, and one of the concerns we have is that their vitamin D is too low. So to prevent those types of problems, we just want to add that type of UVB light. Fluker Farms has a number of different types of sun glow bulbs that can be used to provide that important UVB light. For leopard geckos, I recommend the 5.0 bulb, and you'll also need another clamp lamp for that. That bulb can be placed in that system, and then that can be put on the opposite side of the enclosure. And for this lighting system, I only recommend two hours of that light a day. That's really all they need. Whereas for the heat, they should be provided that about 12 hours a day. Diet is very important for our leopard geckos, and these animals are insectivorous, meaning that they just like to eat insects. One of the issues that we have with captive insects is that they have a very negative calcium to phosphorus ratio. Normally we want the calcium to phosphorus ratio to be about 2 to 1. In many of these animals, it can be anywhere from 1 to 11. What we do recommend when we're feeding those animals, such as crickets or waxworms, mealworms, roaches, superworms, or even things like black soldier fly larva, is that you gut load them prior to offering them to your leopard gecko. There are a couple different ways to gut load them as well. Some people like to use the Fluker Farms Reptic High Calcium Cricket Chow. Others will use the complete diet, such as the Orange Cube diet. Either way, these can be offered to the crickets and you should gut load them at least 6 to 12 hours before feeding them to your pet leopard gecko. For those cases where we're really concerned about their bone development, such as juvenile fast-growing leopard geckos or female leopard geckos that are laying a lot of eggs, we also recommend dusting that food item with Reptocalcium as well. This type of a product will add that little extra calcium and you can do that right before you offer it to the leopard geckos. Once we've got everything set up, it's time to introduce our leopard gecko to their new habitat. It's really important when you're handling leopard geckos to recognize that they're also called fat-tailed geckos and that tail is essential to them storing nutrition. The other thing to recognize is that they can experience natural tail autonomy, meaning that they can actually just drop their tail. That's a defense mechanism that allows them to get away from predators should they grab them. Even though you don't perceive yourself as a predator, the, the handling of your leopard gecko, especially early on, can be somewhat stressful to them. And sometimes people will just notice the gecko walks right away from its tail. Don't worry, it will regrow back. It may not look quite the same, but it will grow back. To limit the likelihood of having problems with the tail, what I recommend is to gently put your hands under the leopard gecko and just support their body. Then we can just lift the leopard gecko, put them in their enclosure. Don't handle them for at least 24 hours to ensure that they have enough time to kind of reacclimate themselves to their new enclosure. Then you'll start to see them become very active at that point. 
I hope you found this information useful today. However, you can find even more information on these products at our website, flukerfarms.com. In addition, check out our Reptile U section for a leopard gecko care guide on our website.